वेलकम टू यू जी सी लेक्चर सीरीज इन जोग्राफी डियर फ्रेंड्स वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टूडे ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज लेक्स एंड इट्स टाइप्स यू नो द लेक्स आर द वाइटल सोर्स ऑफ बोलाजिकल डाइवर्सिटी ऑन द लैंड इट इज एन इन लैंड स्टेटिक वाटर विच इज नॉट ओनली इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर कंट्रोलिंग द हाइड्रोलॉजिकल साइकिल बट ऑल्सो इट्स रिचार्जेज द अंडरग्राउंड वाटर प्रोवाइड्स an important source of irrigation to the local community and it creates recreational opportunity and develop the tourism development in different parts of the country and the world lakes are also used for inland water transportation forestry and the biological diversity the ramsar convention of iran had declared that lakes are the wetlands which are an important component of the biological diversity and the food chain food web on the terrestrial ecosystem let me tell you there are different types of lakes according to their origin and the distribution the most of the lakes found on the continents they are originated through different sources like number 1 the lakes which are found by glaciers the glacial lakes are itself different types like the lakes which were formed during the glacial ages there were four glacial ages on the earth since beginning it is called as gunj mindal ris and wurm these are the glacial ages named by european geographers glacier melt down due to thermal heat due to melting from the below it form large size of caves ranging over up to a kilometer while making the bottleneck condition of the melting the glaciers the large size of glaciers fell down on the ground that has bed large size of low land on the ground which are later on filled up by water and called as glacial lakes for example you know the great lakes of the north america continent which makes the international boundary between us and canada there are bunch of the five lakes all together known as great lakes and all these five lakes are found by glacier they are lake superior lake huron lake michigan lake erie and the lake ontario all these lakes they form in a chain and between the lake erie and ontario is a world famous waterfall on the river st lawrence which originated from the lake ontario that's called as niagara waterfall it is one of the widest waterfall in the world and makes international boundary between us and canada in the north of the great lakes there are series of the glacial lakes found in the canadian territory the lake great bear great slave athabasca reindeer and lake winnipeg they make a line a series which were covered by the large size of glaciers during the last ice age called as nebraska similarly the northern part of europe was also covered by glacier during the last ice age according to european known as wurm if you look the map you will see that there are thousands of the lakes in the greenland and you know the greenland is called as land of thousand lakes also large number of lakes are found in sweden norway and the northern part of russia they are all glacial lakes the second category of the glacial lakes are those lakes which are found by either the glacial erosion or through the glacial deposition among the glacial erosion there are two typical type of lakes which are formed during the erosion of the glacier number 1 called as torn lake torn lake develop in the cirque whenever the slope of any mountain is eroded by the glacier it form an armchair shape this armchair shape of the eroded slope of the mountain called as cirque within the cirque due to exfoliation heaving and thawing 
and the erosion by the glacier it form a low land that low land is later on filled up by water which is called as torn lake the other category of the erosional lake by the glacier is found over the paternoster lake these lakes are formed by series of the fault that is called as stair fault during winter season when the mountain valley is well covered by the glacier glacier moves downwards due to gravity of the slope and during the melting time the glacier fell down over the rocks and form a low land these lakes called as paternoster lake they are also called as cyclopean lakes because the glacier makes stairs which looks like a cyclopeans and these are called as cyclopean lakes no doubt they are not permanent lakes but the water is filled up for a couple of months along the stairs therefore they are called as glacial lakes the third category of the glacial lakes are those lakes which are found by deposition all kinds of sediments carried by the glacier is known as drift and whenever these drift are deposited they are called as till or moraines you know glacial is the solid part and it slips down in the valley while creating the abrasion plucking and polishing when it comes down in the lower part of the valley due to increase in temperature the glacier melt down while melting all the tills get deposited in the form of moraines and that's why the moraines are divided in four types those moraines which are deposited at the end of the moraine that is called as terminal moraine or end moraine these are the large size of the heaps and mounds of the tills deposited by the glacier and found in the end of the valley the second category of the moraines called as valley moraines those sediments of the glacier which are deposited in the bottom of the valley called as ground moraine or valley moraine third category of the glacier deposited called as lateral moraine those sediments of the glacier or the tills which are deposited along the valley side that is called as lateral moraines and finally the median moraines those moraines which are deposited between the two lateral moraines at the end of the valley the two lateral moraines join each other and form the median moraines whenever the moraines are deposited they block the flow of water and the water gets accumulated whenever the water collected and gets accumulated due to the barrier of the deposited material of the glacier that is called as glacial moraines and sometimes these deposition of these sediments are washed out by the flow of the water and that is called as outwash plain there are number of ups and downs in the deposited part of the moraines those low lying areas remain filled up by water they are called as caves and later on these deposited material are completely washed out and the remains of these moraines as metamorphosed due to the passage of time compression pressure and the temperature later on they converted as esker and these esker are become very hard due to metamorphication which are least affected by erosion and they are enough to control the flow of water and the water gets accumulated along the esker that is called as esker glacier so the terminal moraine glacier ground moraine glacier the lateral glacier and the median glacier all they block the water the flow of water and those water which are accumulated called as glacial lakes friends no doubt these glacial lakes are modified almost every year because it depends on the amount of snowfall and if the particular year the snowfall is more that creates the flood and the lake 
is outburst and flash out in the lower part. The another category of the legs is found by endogenetic forces. You might have heard about the folding and faulting. The folding and faulting are caused by convection currents which are originated inside the crust of the earth. The internal power in the form of the convection currents appear above the surface of the earth which creates crustal bending. The crust is modified either due to the convection currents the part of the crust moves upward or it moves downward. These convection currents are two types. One is the rising column, other is the falling column. Both creates the origin of the lakes. Let me tell you, during the rising column currents, if two currents rises and convert from different direction, they create compressional force on the ground. This compressional force creates folding. So, the land moves either upward or downward. If the entire land moves upward or downward, it is called as warping. Upward warping moving upward, downward warping moving downward. So, those land which is affected by downward warping, this is filled up later on through the rain water or drainage water and converts as a lake. During the rising column convection currents, it also compresses the landform if it is formed by heterogeneous rocks. There are number of ups and downs created on the crust of the earth. So, those part which moves upward called as anticlines and moves downward called as syncline. So, there are number of syncline lakes on the earth. Those synclines later on filled up by water, maybe the rain water, maybe the glacial water or the drainage water and that form big size of lake that form the deeper lake. For example, Lake Baikal in Russia is the deepest lake in the world is found by the anticlines. Similarly, Lake Nanital in Uttaranchal is the syncline lake. There are more than seven lakes known as Tal, like Nanital, Bhim Tal. They are all found by the anticlines and filled up by water called as syncline lakes. Similarly, between the Peer Panjal and the Hauladhar, there is a dull lake in Srinagar, Jammu Kashmir, which is filled up by water and have found the big size of lake. It is also syncline lake. You know this is the major attraction of tourism in Jammu Kashmir. Similarly, the crustal movements also creates the rift valleys. Now, let me tell you when the rising convection currents becomes falling column currents. These currents moving from different direction join each other and move downward. While moving downward, it creates lot of downward pressure. It drags the land downwards which create large size of land moves downward and create big basin. That basin later on filled up by water and sediment it is called as lake. You might have heard about the Tethys. According to a German geologist known as Alfred Wegener, he had mentioned that at the time of the origin of earth, there was only one continent known as Pangaea and due to the convection currents, the downward movement of the convection currents created a big size of basin which was filled up by water called as Tethys and this Tethys later on filled up by sediments which form the geosyncline. Friends, geosynclines are also the part of lake. The difference is that they are big size of lake and you know many lakes which are inland lake on the continent they are also known as sea. For example, if you look the map of the Europe continent you see the Caspian lake and it is called as Caspian sea. Lake Ural called as Ural sea because of its big size. 
but they are formed by the falling column convection currents. The falling column convection currents also creates rift or you can say fault valley. You might have heard the rift valley. In India, there are four rivers passing through the rift valley like Narmada, River Tapti, River Soon and the little part of River Damodar. You imagine River Narmada and Tapti draining towards west and they join the Arabian Sea. What will happen if the end of the Narmada and Tapti is blocked? That rift is not too long that can enter to the Arabian Sea. They might have been converted as a rift lake. Because of the rift which is inland, the water is static. It forms the lake. Maximum of the rift lakes are found in Africa continent. Now, the third category of the lakes which are found by the volcanism. Friends, you know, there are number of types of volcanoes. According to the activeness, there are three types of volcanoes known as active volcano, you know, which erupts the lava, dust particles, gases, ash, which erupt in the atmosphere is called as active volcano. Second category is the dormant volcano, which is dormant for a couple of decades. Later on, all of a sudden, it erupts. And the third category are the dead volcano or extinct volcano. It is very difficult to make the difference between the dormant volcano and the extinct volcano. But one thing I would like to mention you so that you can identify that which one is the dead volcano and which one is the dormant volcano. Those dead volcanoes, the crater, the mouth of the volcano, which are filled up by water because the continuous sedimentation, the pipe of the volcano is filled up and the water is not able to percolate inside the volcano. And the crater that is called as mouth of the volcano is filled up by water that form the crater lake also called as caldera. Caldera lake or crater lake. Most of these caldera lakes or the crater lakes are the source of origin of the rivers because they are situated on high altitude. There are number of caldera lakes found over Andes mountain, Rocky mountain and in the Africa continent. The largest caldera lake in the world is found close to the equator in the mid part of the Africa continent which is known as Lake Victoria. And friends, you might be knowing that the river Nile is the longest river in the world draining more than 5600 kilometer and passing over the desert. Even then, river Nile is a perennial river and forms big size of delta. The source of the river Nile is the Lake Victoria and the Lake Kyoga which lies north of the Lake Victoria in the Africa continent. Because Lake Victoria lies on equator, there is conventional rainfall due to the convection, the moisture rises in the atmosphere and almost every day there is rainfall. That rainwater drains out from the Lake Victoria and give origin to the river Nile. In Ethiopia, there is a Lake Tana. Lake Tana is also a caldera lake through which a tributary of the river Nile known as Blue Nile and river Atabara originate and join river Nile as a tributary. The caldera lakes are also important source of the recharging the hydrological cycle. The highest lake in the world you might be knowing lies in the South America continent at the border of the Bolivia and the Peru countries. It makes international boundary between these two countries. It is called as Lake Titicaca which is the highest lake in the world. This is also a caldera lake. There are Lake Toba in Indonesia on the Sumatra island. That is the largest lake of the Southeast Asia. 
is also Caldera Lake. So these lakes are the source of the origin of the river and many of the lakes which are very high, they are affected by glaciation during the winter season and when the glacier melts down in summer, they form the lake. Friends, so these are the volcanic lake called as Caldera Lake or also called as Crater Lake. Many of the crater lakes are affected by the deposition of the lava because sometimes the dormant lakes are also filled up by water and whenever the lava appears or also the deposition of the magma in the pipe like shape which is called a dike. The dike also appears inside the lake, inside the caldera lake. Those caldera lake having island in the mid part of the lake, they are called as nested caldera lake or nested volcanic lake. Now friends, I will discuss some of the types of lakes which are found, which are found on the continents. One of the important lakes you might be knowing about the dams. They are, they are called as man-made lake or anthropogenic lake. For the hydropower project, canal irrigation, fishing, inland water transportation, large size of dams are constructed on the rivers and the river water get accumulated and form the reservoir. You might have heard about Aswan Dam on River Nile. The dam constructed at the border of the Egypt and Sudan and big size of lake has been developed in Sudan that's called as Lake Nasser. Nasser Lake has given lot of opportunity for recreation, agriculture, rather you can say it is the life support system for the people living in the desert of the countries like Egypt and Sudan. Similarly, the Europeans built up large size of dam on the river Zambezi at the border of the Zimbabwe and the Zambia. That is called as Kariba Dam. And Kariba Dam has developed large size of lake called as Lake Kariba. And friends, this is the largest man-made lake on the earth. It is the largest artificial lake found in the Zimbabwe and Zambia border. We have several examples in India also. The Bhakaranangal Dam constructed on River Satlas at the border of Himachal Pradesh and Punjab. The water is stored in the reservoir, it is called as Gobind Sagar Lake that is the largest artificial lake in India and friends these lakes are a great important for the modern human development providing infrastructure for irrigation. You know the Punjab, Haryana, Western Uttar Pradesh and the parts of Rajasthan, these were the states which had accepted and initiated the green revolution in India. The basic reason behind the successful orientation of the green revolution in India was the canals and these canals were taken out from the Gobind Sagar Lake, Bhakra Dam, Nangal Dam. So these lakes provide large scale irrigation development. Canals also provide the inland water transportation large-scale fishing and the recreation along the canal, along the lakes. Also, these canals provides not only the agriculture development, also the all kinds of integrated rural development has become possible through the canals which are originated from the artificial lakes or man-made lakes. There are different other kinds of minor lakes which are found by the disastropic conditions. Say for example, a river draining out in the mountainous region, there is large scale landslides. 
whenever the landslides occur in the mountainous region, this large scale landslides creates a dam like situation and the water is stored in the basin of the river and it creates lake. No doubt these lakes are not permanent lakes after the accumulation of water that debris cannot sustain the load of the water and the river flies out those lakes. But these are temporary lakes which are developed in the basin of the river. Friends, these lakes are created, formed on the earth through the different agents, both the external forces as well as the internal forces. And these lakes provides all kinds of life support system to the human society, also to the all kinds of biological organisms and to support the biological diversity. We can also divide the lakes on the basis of the salinity. Let me mention you there are two types of lakes on the basis of salinity. One is called as saline lake which having the excess concentration of the salinity. For example, Dead Sea in Jordan, Lake Juan in Turkey and the Great Salt Lake in the United States of America. These lakes are highly affected by sal salinity and these are not having any kind of life support system. There is no fish, there is no any kind of living organisms found in these lakes because of excess of the salinity. Those lakes which are found in desert they are also affected by large scale concentration of salt and few of the lakes are not permanent. They have water in couple of months then the later on they dry up. These kinds of desert lake are called as playa lake. This playa lake we have made several examples of the playa lake. For example, Lake Chad in Sahara desert is the playa lake. Lake Sambhar in Rajasthan is also one of the examples of the Playa Lake. And friends, those lakes which are not found in the desert, but they are found on the continent, they are freshwater lake. And these freshwater lakes are of immense importance for human development of the human society. So these are different aspects of the lake. Friends, I hope you have understood all the aspects of the lakes we have discussed so far. There are many other aspects of the lakes which we will discuss in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.